Hallelujah. Come on and lift up the name of Jesus. He is worthy to be praised. Can I hear a hallelujah? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we magnify your name tonight for you are great. You are worthy to be praised and we exalt you. You are God everlasting to everlasting and we worship you tonight. Come on and put those hands together for the most high God. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Woo. Any lighthouse in the house tonight? We shining our light for Jesus Christ. Wherever we go, whatever we do, we are representing Christ Jesus. Let me hear the lighthouse make some noise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I bless the name of Jesus, Bishop Lee. I greet you and your wonderful wife and our administration, administrative bishop. I greet you and all the ministers. I just want to greet you tonight. And I want to greet you on behalf of my pastors, Bishop and Reverend Michaelia Dalban. It's an honor and a privilege to be here. And we're looking forward to just worship with you tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless your name tonight, God. We thank you, God, that you are in control. We thank you, God, that you are in control. And we worship you tonight. Hallowed be your name. Woo! Come on, put those hands together. Hey! Come on in, put chains together. Come on in, put chains together. Come on in, put chains together. Everybody, come on. Come on in, put chains together. Come on in, put chains together. Come on in, put chains together. Everybody, come on. Hey, come on in, put chains together. Come on in, put chains together. Come on in, put chains together. Everybody, come on. I walk in the light, I carry the light. Live in the light, die in the light. I'm a lighthouse. I'm a lighthouse. Not ashamed of his name, not a sing his praise. Give my life to the calling every day. I'm a lighthouse. I'm a lighthouse. Come on, come on in, put chains together. Come on in, put chains together. Come on in, put chains together. Everybody, come on. Come on, come on in, put chains together. Come on in, put chains together. Come on in, put chains together. Everybody, come on. I walk in the light, I carry the light. Live in the light. Dying the light, I'm a lighthouse. I'm a lighthouse. Not ashamed of his name, not a sing his praise. Give my life to the calling every day. I'm a lighthouse. I'm a lighthouse. Come on, come on in, put chains together. Come on in, put chains together. Come on in, put chains together. Everybody, come on. Come on, come on in, put chains together. Come on in, put chains together. Come on in, put chains together. Praise in my life to the calling every day. I'm a lighthouse. We're gonna do it Jamaican style. Listen, oh man, a Christian that had a life on my death and don't know for this one. The other man, not denying our back, don't shout it out. This a gospel, yo, we not turn it down. We say, step out, we are salt of the earth. We say, step out, in our heart, God, fire burn. Step out, take the gospel of Jesus to the whole wide world. I walk in the light, I carry the light, live in the light. I'm the light, I'm a lighthouse, I'm a lighthouse, not ashamed of his name, not a sing his praise, in my life to the corner, every day, I'm a lighthouse, you ready? I'm a lighthouse, come on, come on in, put chains together, come on in, put chains together, come on in, put chains together, everybody, come on, come on in, put chains together, come on in, put chains together, come on in.
something from Jamaica with you. I'm from Jamaica, Kingston, Jamaica. And the song that we're going to do is called Somehow. And I need you to help us worship. I know you don't know it. The words are on the screen to kind of help us out tonight. But the song is talking about that. We don't know how God is going to work it out, but he's going to work it out how? Somehow. And somehow means one way or the other. But he's going to. It's really not my business to know how he's going to do it. But my concern is that I know he's going to do it. So I do a little Jamaican thing in it and I want you to understand. So when you hear me go off into my dialect, I'm saying, let me tell you this. I don't trust in man. My eyes are on God and my life is in his hands. I hold on to my faith and I stand up strong. I have no fear. I trust this plan. The last time I check is not a man who gives me bread. Though you bless me, it is still my God who sent it. The hope I hope I hope in. The trust I trust I trust in. The stand I stand I stand in. And the strong that I'm strong I'm strong in. Because things going to turn around how? Huh? If you can get something you can wave tonight. But we're going to dance in the presence of the Lord. Because our God never fails. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and put those hands together for Jesus. You're worthy, God. He can't hear my cry His hands are weak, always ding 
So when we say he remember you, it means he remembers you. Because sometimes we're in that place that we feel like God has forgotten us. But we're here to tell you tonight that your God remembers you.
worship him tonight. Jesus, hold on, hold it right there, hold it right there. Hold it right there. I don't know who is in the room. But you just need to put your hand up and declare those words tonight. You make a everybody help me sing it. Lord, you make a
was sitting at home and I was just sitting in the presence of God and I just did not know what to say.
yes you are mighty god you're mighty you're mighty you're mighty you're mighty god yes 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 my god you're lovely and you're beautiful you're lovely and you're lovely and you're lovely and you're beautiful
every hand lifted in the room. I'm about to take my seat in a minute. But just work. God. God, we thank you for allowing us to be in this house on a Friday night. God, when the bars are full, God, when other the worldly places are full and they are full of spirit, but God, the Holy Spirit is in this house tonight, God. God, that there's an outpouring in this house, God. God, there's a Shekinah glory in this house, Jesus. God, that your people walk in to receive, and you are pouring, and you are pouring out, God. Fill the room, Jesus. God, you walk in this place today. Holy Spirit, have your way, have your way. Jesus, 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 I want, thank you, God, thank you, God. Can we just give it up for JC and the worship? Yeah. We don't have to rush this moment. We don't have to rush this moment. I know we got things to do, but right now, just pray. Just pray where you're at. We came to connect. We're connecting with Jesus. We're connecting with the Holy Spirit on another level tonight. You walked in this room. You registered to be here to connect with the Spirit of the living God. So it's time to reconnect some things. There's some dead things that are coming back to life. There's some things that are going to get broken up your life because you are connected to the vine of the, the, of the living vine, God. And he produces good things. Jesus, God, we just thank you. Bear you dwelling right here, God. You're dwelling in this place, Jesus. The King of glory is in the room. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Come on, don't stop. You got a praise that's inside of you. You got a word. Hey, God, that he shut up.
Floating in the room tonight, Jesus. Hey, thank you, Jesus. There's a timeline, so forgive me, but I believe the Spirit overtakes the timeline. And I believe He's doing something we can hold for a minute and say, Thank you.
Come on, let's lift up that song again. There's nobody like you, Lord. We honor you tonight. Have your own way. Come on. No one can touch like you do. time there is none like you I feel like this is what the spirit wants us to do in this moment so we're just gonna let him have his own way name of Jesus in this house. Come on. Give him your best praise. Some of you have come here and you've heard the word. You've heard every word this week. And you now are full of the Spirit of God. And he wants to pour out upon you tonight. So I just want you to go into a worship, into a praise, lifting up his name. Come on, open up your mouth. Give God the highest praise. Come on and honor the Lord for this moment. Hallelujah. Thank you for your presence. I feel your Holy Ghost. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your oil. We thank you for visiting with us. Thank you for sitting in this atmosphere. We thank you that the fire of God is in this place. We thank you. We thank you. Apostle, I love you. Dr. Precious, I love you. Denisha, I love you. Everybody, I love all of y'all. 
if I start calling names of people who <laughs> changed my diaper and <laughs> prayed for me when I was in trouble and who gave me opportunity and opened doors for me, I'd be here all night. So can we give ourselves a round of applause for who you are in the kingdom of God and for who you are and what you do for the king kingdom of God. I want you to know that your labor is not in vain. The best is in front of you. Hallelujah, your past is behind you and greater is to come. Can we say amen to that tonight? Amen, 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 amen. I saw Connecticut family in the house. I thank God for you. I thank God for each and every one of you. Can you grab your Bibles with me tonight and go to Acts chapter number 28? I won't be before you long. It's a quick word. I know we got a concert tonight, and uh, I know how we go about concerts. So I, I, I'm going to deliver the word, and I believe it's in season. And then we're going to get to the concert. Is that all right? Acts chapter number 28, looking at verse number 1. The word says, now when they had escaped, they then found out that the island called Malta and the natives showed us unusual kindness for they kindled a fire and made us all welcome because of the rain that was falling and because of the cold. But when Paul gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on a fire, a viper came out because of the heat and fastened on his hand. So when the natives saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said to one another, no doubt this man is a murderer whom thou has escaped the sea, yet justice does not allow him to live. But he shook off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. Turn to your neighbor and say, shake it off. However, they were expecting that he would swell up or suddenly fall dead. But after they had looked for a long time, saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said he was a God. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, we thank you for this preaching moment. We thank you for this opportunity to declare your word. I believe that God, you've given this word prophetically to your people. I pray that you would preach with my lips. I pray that you would anoint me to declare what thus saith the Lord with power, with the anointing, with the grace, with the fire, with the oil of God. And I thank you that heaven is back in this word tonight. God, I pray that God, your people will have an ear to hear, a heart to receive, mind to be alert in the name of Jesus and every believer with the power of agreement shout amen 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 turn to a neighbor around you say neighbor shake it off find another neighbor say neighbor I don't know what you came in here with tonight I don't know what you came burdened with tonight but tonight you need to shake it off shake it off shake it off come on go go ahead and do it prophetically shake it off shake off depression shake off suicide shake off every spirit that is not like shake 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 it off I believe that uh, this word is for you believers. Many of you are pastors and leaders and, and many of you are, are, are leaders in the church and in the body of Christ. And the word that God has given me is to the body of Christ because we have gone through a long season of trials and tribulations, of challenges where we didn't know how we were going to get out of it. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Our, our, many of us, our attendance has uh, gotten low and we don't know when it's going to turn around. Is there anybody in here dealing with that? Many of our followers may not be in the pews anymore. They may be watching online. Somebody say, that's a transition. That's a change. And sometimes it's hard when you are expecting one thing in one season and it don't look like what you were expecting. The last two years have brought unexpected challenges that many have not recovered from, that many are 
still are feeling the pain and agony of what happened in the last two seasons. Hallelujah. As leaders, we are called and appointed by God. And the call on our lives demands that we face things in life that are unexpected. Many may look at one who is called and say that they want that anointing or they want that oil that is on your life. But what they don't know is the cost of the oil on your life. This looks easy and it feels like it may it may look like I come to the stage and it, it's all easy. But you don't know what it took for me to get here. Do I have anybody in here that says it took something for me to get to where I am? I didn't just arrive here. I didn't just show up here. It's, this took sacrifice. This took prayer. This took overlooking some things. This took praying and fasting and seeking the face of God. This took counseling. Come on. This may have taken therapy for some people, but whatever it took, you kept going. Somebody shout amen. Because when you are called and appointed by God, you can't just quit. Now, everything in you may want to quit. Uh-huh. If we'd be honest, if we'd be real, if the truth be told, there have been times in this Christian journey where you wanted to throw in the towel. You didn't think uh, that Christians would act that way. You didn't think it would be this hard. You didn't think it would be this difficult, but you stuck with it. And I came to tell somebody because you did not quit, because you did not throw in the towel, because you did not give up, because you did not resign. I came to tell you uh, that there's greater on the way. Can you nudge a neighbor and say, neighbor, because you did not give up. Because you did not quit, because you did not turn your back, because you did not give, on, give up on the marriage, because you did not quit the job, that greater is coming for you. This is not the season to give up and die, but this is the season to declare that I will live and not die. I will live to declare the works of the Lord. I refuse to die. There's too much souls on the other side of this thing for me to give up and quit. I must continue the journey that God has for me. Somebody shout amen. Not only am I called, but I'm chosen by God. God chose me. He assigned me. You see, you see, there's some people who jump out here and they just start ministries and start things and just do things. And then they deal with the warfare and they can't handle it. But when you are called, when warfare comes, when attacks come, when challenges come, you say to the devil, I'm not backing down. I am not giving up. You can't make me turn my back on the promise God put on my life. There's something on the other side of it. And I got to get to it so I will not quit because I'm called and I'm chosen by God the Bible says for many are called but few are chosen I came to tell somebody who's been discouraged that God chose you. He handpicked you for the task. He, he assigned you for that marriage. He assigned you to that child. He assigned you to that ministry. He assigned you to what he has placed in your hand. You have been chosen like David. You may be sitting on the backside of the desert. Nobody knows your name. They don't call you for anything, but you've been chosen by God. Man may have overlooked you. Man may have rejected you. Man may not call your name. They may not ask you to do nothing, but as long as God has called you, there's a grace on your life to do what he called you to do. I'm so glad that I don't depend on man's approval. Because at the end of the day, man will look at your rap sheet, they'll look at your resume, they'll look at your past and disqualify you. But I'm grateful to God that God does not look at my past and disqualifies me. He says, that's the one I want to use. That's the one I want to have preach the gospel. That's the one I want to use by my grace. If the truth be told, many who are preaching will be honest and say, my God, it had to be God that called me because no man would have put me up here. And I'm not talking about a gender. I'm just saying in general, men sometimes have opinions about who belongs where. 
Can I talk about it for a second? Uh huh. But when God has his hand on your life, when God puts a stamp of approval on you, when God says, I'm going to use you for my glory, when his hand is on your life, hallelujah, nothing can stop the move and the plan of God for your life. Opposition may come. Challenges may come. Storms may come. Hard times may come. But you are rooted like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth fruit in a season. Hallelujah. I wonder, is there anybody in here that says, I don't care what comes. I'm going to stay planted in the word of God. I don't care what challenges come. I don't care what the members say. It does not matter what the world say. God called me. God assigned me. And I got to stay in it until he calls me home. When you're called, you got to fight for it, Bishop Uma. Uh -huh. when, when, when you're called and you're anointed and you're chosen by God, you got to be willing to go through pressure, go through hard times, go through challenges, go through persecution. You got to be tough. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Listen, this is not, <laughs> this, 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 this movement, this, I got distracted because my mother here, thank God for her. <laughs> this, this move of God, hallelujah, hallelujah, this move of God, this assignment, this call, hallelujah, is, is for those who are willing to stick with it even when it gets tough. Cause this ain't this thing ain't it's not easy and then and now a lot of times there are challenges and there are, there are things that we have to go through and then we can't even talk about it sometimes I was talking to Bishop Heston uh, and, and uh, many of the other uh, people in the lobby and they were saying the best part of the conference is the conversation because a lot of times we're dealing with things in silos that we don't get to talk about amongst ourselves but the truth be told, all of us got something going on. And thanks be to God that he brought us here and we've survived it. I'm getting ahead of myself, but, but I'm, I'm grateful that through the storm, through the rain, through tribulations, through trials, through pain, I can depend on God. I can depend on him. I didn't come out of this by myself. I, my God, it was God who brought me out of this. It wasn't man who called me. It was God who called me. And if he called me to it, I'm going to work through it. Statistically, reports say that the church is in decline. They say because uh, we will not see the numbers we've seen in the past. There's many generational gaps that are seen in our churches. More people online than in the pews. But I want to declare to you that the church has not seen its final hour. Because ultimately this is God's church. And he said, upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against his church. Let me get into the text. Our text, we're in the middle of Paul's journey. There are so many challenges in his journey. We know that Paul, who was a murderer, a persecutor of Christians, one who what man would say is not qualified to be in the position and be used in the way that he is used. That's why we got to be careful in the body of Christ with who we disqualify for kingdom work. Because sometimes the one God wants to use may not look like you. They may not act like you. They may not, they may not have the culture background that you got. But God is using them. He's working on their heart. He's working on their mind. Hallelujah. Some of them work harder than, oh, never mind. It's the truth. And sometimes God can work on an individual who hasn't been through the culture of the church more than someone who is brand new. I'm just putting that out there. You see, he, along with the other prisoners, were delivered into the hands of Julius the centurion. Julius put him on board the ship that was headed to Rome. So their destination was Rome. Come on, somebody. Their destination was Rome. When they sailed slowly, they reached a point in their journey where they could no, like, no longer keep going because the winds were too strong. And Paul told the people, Paul said, look, this ship is going to go down. We're going to lose some stuff along the way if we don't stop somewhere. Let me tell somebody in here, sometimes we lose things along the way because we don't listen to prophetic voices. 
because they may not look like what we want them to look like, but we got to listen to the voice of God through whom God is sending it through. And a lot of times, uh, hallelujah, we miss things along the way because we are not listening closely. Paul says we should stop. We should find refuge somewhere. But no, the captain said we're going to keep going. We're going to keep going because they felt like they knew more. But Paul had been on this journey before. He was familiar with the Mediterranean Sea. He had dealt with the uh, Iraqlatan wind before. He had dealt with these storms. He, he had been through it before. So he knew that there was a potential that there would be some loss. So just like he proclaimed it while they were traveling, they, the boat, the ship, began to fall apart. The ship began to break. And in the process of the ship beginning to break, they began to say, we got to throw some things overboard. So they started to throw their goods and their materials and the things that they needed for the journey. They had to start throwing it overboard simply because they did not listen in the beginning. And how many times do we suffer great loss because we're not following the voice of God through whomever it's coming through? How many times do we lose things along the way because we're listening to the wrong voice instead of the right voice? How many times have we lost? How many souls have we lost? Because we listened to the wrong voice who was intimidated by the person who was being put forth. How many ministries have we lost because it wasn't popular or you didn't hear about it in another church? How many pastors have we lost because we did not restore them? We just let them go. Because we did not listen to the voice of the Spirit. My sheep know my voice. And a stranger they will not follow. If ever there was a time that we need to hear a word from the Lord. Listen, I don't want to move without the spirit of God. I don't want to breathe without the spirit of God. I need him every step of the way. I, hallelujah. There's not a decision I'm willing to make without consulting God first. If you're in a hurry, you're going to have to wait until I consult with God. Because I need him to speak. I need him to direct. I need the Holy Ghost to order my footsteps. Is there anybody in here that says I'm not willing to go without the spirit of God? The steps of a good man or woman are ordered by the Lord. I'm willing to wait on God to be directed in the way he wants me to go. And some of us could have uh, uh, missed out on a lot of heartbreak and a lot of disappointment and a lot of failure if we had just listened to the voice of God. Because sometimes God gives us an illogical instruction that may not make sense to man. But you heard it from God. Pastors, this is for you. Because sometimes you hear stuff and then you have your naysayers who can't see what you saw or heard what you heard. And you back down because you don't want to make them uncomfortable. But the truth of the matter is if you heard God and you have the clearance from heaven, you have to do what God tells you to do. Because at the end of the day, the two words you want to hear is well done. That good and faithful servant. Folks will have you missing out on what God wants you to do because they can't see or hear what you heard. Suffered great loss. But Paul said that although we suffered great loss, Although we have a sinking ship, <laughs> although it seems like we're going down and we're broken, although it seems like all oh, hope is gone, although it feels like the winds are tossing me to and fro, although it may feel like I'm hopeless and I'm alone, hallelujah, I'm getting out of this ship, whether it is on boards and broken pieces, I'm coming out. Is there anybody in here who's ever been there in a hopeless situation, in a drop situation, in a situation you didn't seem any way out of it? 
and, and, and some kind of way, some jumped off the ship, some stayed on and took pieces of it, but they got to the shore. I came to tell somebody, whether on boards and broken pieces, you're going to the shore. I know you may be broken. Your ship may have fallen apart and all hope is gone. But I'm coming to tell somebody that you're going to the shore. You're not going to die. You're going to live to see what God has for you. I wish you would grab a neighbor and say, neighbor, you can't die in this season. There's something on the other side that God has for you. You can't give up. You can't throw in the towel. You can't forget the promise. Is there anybody in here that had to get to the other side on boards and broken pieces? It was not all together, and I didn't look like what I went through, but my God, I came to the shore. Is there anybody in here that says, I will live and not die? I'm going to live to declare the works of the Lord. I'm not going to die. Cancel the funeral arrangements. Cancel the floral arrangements. I'm prepared to live. <laughs> Grab a neighbor. Say neighbor. I'm not preparing to die. I'm preparing to live. I'm preparing to see the victory. I'm preparing to see a turnaround. I'm preparing to see my healing. I'm preparing to see my breakthrough. I wish somebody in here would get a prophetic anointing and just do a quick turnaround and say, I believe. It's turning for you. I know what the devil said. I know what the doctor said. I know what the news report says. But whose report will you believe? We shall believe. Part of the Lord. I can't die in a storm. There's too much in front of me. Somebody said there's too much to live for. There's too much in front of me. There's too much anointing on my life. God has a plan for me. There's too much ministry to do for me to give up now. I cannot die, but I will live to declare the works of the Lord. Many of you, you thought you were going to die. You were at knocking at death's door, but God said not yet, not so. There's more for you to do. You will live. You're going to live through it. I just want you to prophesy to yourself, I'm going to live through this. I'm not getting ready to die. I'm not getting ready to throw in the towels. My best days are not behind me. They're in front of me. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. God's got my back. I'm going through the storm, but God is carrying me through it. Yay, so I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. Why? Because God is with me. Hallelujah. I know you're going through a battle right now and it feels like all oh, hope is gone, but you're not by yourself. God is with you. He's carrying you through it. He's fighting with you. He has your back. And if you have to get through it through swimming, if you have to get through it, we're holding on to boards. Stick with it. God will give you peace in the midst of what is happening around you. I know calamity and they are speaking doom and gloom over the lives of the people of God, but you're not going to die in this. You have somewhere to go. You see, there are many times in our lives where we can look back and we can say God has done it in the past. And if he's done it in the past, he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. There is nothing that God cannot do. There's nothing too hard for him. I know what you've been through and how long you've been in it. Come on, somebody. But I came to tell somebody that you're going to live through it to get to the other side. 2 Corinthians 11 verse 25 tells us that by the time Paul uh, was telling uh, the folks uh, that they were going to lose some things, uh, but they were going to make it, he had been shipwrecked before. 
He, had, he was telling them from a place, uh, hallelujah, uh, of, of surety because he had been there before. And they were at sea for, for many days without food. They were starting to feel helpless. And Paul says, you should have listened to me, but there will be no loss among you, only the ship. Only the ship. And I want to tell somebody in here, Hallelujah. You may have lost so much, but there will be no more loss among you. God is getting ready to bless you. You see, he told him, be not afraid because Paul, you have to go to Caesar. Paul, you have to go to Rome. And so if God gave you a promise and he is a promise keeper and he holds to his word, and the promises of God are yes and amen. I can't die because there's a promise on my life. I want you to nudge your neighbor and say, yeah, I got a promise on my life. Hallelujah. It ain't over until God says it's over. It's not over until you walk into your total victory. I'm not settling for partial victory. I'm believing until the promise comes to pass. He then told them to take heart. Be encouraged. Understand. Hallelujah. He told them to take control of your mind so that you can be brave and courageous during dark times. I don't know about you, but sometimes when you're going down and it seems like everything is failing amongst you, hallelujah, you may lose heart. You may become discouraged. Hallelujah. But be not weary and well-doing for in due season you will reap if you faint not. The third thing that Paul said was, I believe God. That's all you need. When it looks like everything is falling apart and everything is hopeless and every time you turn around, there's another thing. All you need to say is, <laughs> uh huh. When the the divorce papers are, are filed on you, uh, hallelujah, and it looks like your marriage is over, all you need to say is, when the church looks like it's falling apart, people are resigning and leaving, all you got to say is, when you're not seeing the numbers uh, like you thought you would, uh, hallelujah, and it looks like all hope is gone. I wish somebody would get this in their spirit today. Hallelujah. If you only leave with three, these three words, uh, you have left with the prophetic word to carry you through the next few months. Uh, you got to say over everything you're dealing with, I believe. And that's what the enemy has attacked. The enemy in this season has attacked our belief in God, our faith in God. Many of us have lost faith and confidence in God and belief that he can do it for us. We've seen too much happening around us and we say, well, it's happening for them, but not me. But I came to tell you today that it's going to happen for you. You got to believe God. Build your faith again. Get your faith up and trust that God's going to get you to where he's called you. You got a ministry to build. You got children to build. You got something on the other side of this. Somebody say, I believe God. The Bible says... Now, when they had escaped, they found an island called Malta. Malta was supposed to be a place of rest. Malta was supposed to be a place of reprieve from a traumatic and life-altering storm. They had seen weather, hallelujah, rain and cold, and they hadn't eaten for a long time. And then Paul, uh, uh, who is there with amongst hundreds of other people, he decides that he is going to fuel the fire with sticks. So Paul begins to take sticks and throw it into the fire. Paul is seemingly doing the work of ministry. Paul is preparing the fire for the people. Paul is preparing a, a, a fire to keep people warm. It is to help them. It is to support them. It is so that they can be warm from the storm. And while Paul is seemingly doing the right thing, while Paul is seemingly doing what he was called or he felt led to do, he gets bit by a snake. And not only is he bit by the snake, but the snake fastened itself to 
into his hand. And the snake's venom, it was almost in his fingers. And it felt like I would imagine that it was going to swell up. The people around him, all, however many hundred of them, although they were kind and they were nice and they made sure that they were comfortable and it was a place of refuge, they stood back and watched and said, we're going to see him die. The venom alone is going to make him swollen and die. Can you imagine building a fire for people who now look at you and say, we're going to watch you die? I don't know if there's anybody in here who can be completely real with me and honest with me that sometimes you do things to help people and it almost is like they bite your hand when you're helping them. Uh, if you've been in ministry a day, you will understand the people that you counsel and you tell them the right thing to do. They turn around and do their own thing and then blame you. Is there anybody in here that can agree with me that sometimes you get bit doing the right thing? That sometimes the sting of life will eat you up when you're trying to do the right thing. When you're trying to live right. When you're trying to be holy. When you're trying to walk upright. When you're trying to build a ministry. All of a sudden you get a bite. Hallelujah. But let me tell you something. When you get bit. And I say when because it's going to happen. When you get bit. What you got to do is you got to move. You can't stay stuck because if you stay stuck, the venom is going to get in you. And that's when bitterness starts to root up in you. That's when you can't do ministry because you're thinking about the hurt. That's when you build walls up and you can't talk to people anymore. Am I preaching up in here, somebody? You can't let the venom get you because if you allow the venom to get you, you'll start treating people funny. I wish I had a church up in here. My God, if you, if you let the venom get in you, you won't do ministry on the level you should be doing ministry on. But I came to tell the body of Christ that when the snake comes, you better learn how to shake it off. I wish I had somebody in here. I wish I had about 20 people that can grab a neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't know who bit you. I don't know what came your way that tried to take you off your course. I don't know who tried to get you out of the ministry, who tried to get you to resign, who tried to get you to fail. I came to tell you that you better learn to shake it off. Shake off the pain. Shake off the bitterness. Shake off the depression. Shake off the... Un you better learn how to shake that thing off. Because if you don't shake it off, you'll miss out on what God's trying to do for you in this season. You'll miss out on the ministry. You need those hands to lay hands on the sick so that they can recover. You need those hands so that you can do the work that God has called you to do. And I don't know about anybody in here, but every now and then I get discouraged. And I remember that sometimes you got to move despite what comes your way. You can't get stuck. You can't get Get stopped. You got to keep going. You got to keep moving. I will press toward the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Is there anybody in here that says I'm going to press? I'm going to press when it hurts. I'm going to press when I'm in pain. I'm going to press when they talk about me. I'm going to press when they leave me. I'm going to press. I'm going to press. I'm going to press. If you allow the snake venom to get in you, you'll miss out on the next season. Let me tell you how this word came about. This month, I went on a 21-day fast. And the Lord told me that when I go on this fast, that he was going to do some things in me. 
And while I went on the fast, the Lord reminded me. The Lord reminded me that the reason why certain things have not flowed in ministry for me the way that they could have flowed is because I was blocking myself. Because there were commitments that I made to myself, not to God that I would never experience because of what I saw others go through. Can we be honest up in here? And so the Lord says, I'm going to take you back to 2010. And I'm going to uproot. I'm going to uproot the snake bite that put its fangs in you and caused you to build up walls and bitterness and hurt so that you would not do what I called you to do. I came to tell somebody that if God could set me free and if I can survive the snake bite, so can you. I know my time is up, but I came to tell somebody that you're going to overcome because of the snake bite. You've been called and chosen by God. And although that thing bit you, you can't let it sting you forever. You got to let some things go. You got to drop those things, those weights, those sins that so easily beset you. Because you got a race to run. You got a devil to fight. You got a generation that's behind you that's pushing and travailing and they're wanting more. And the Lord gave me this word because he said, he said that there are many in this room who are dealing with the bite of Satan and they've allowed it to fester and it has become, hallelujah, infected. And because you're infected, you've infected other people. Because as a leader, when you are hurt, you preach from a broken place. And in order for you to preach from a whole place, you got to shake some things off. You got to shake it off. Yes, it hurt. Yes, it cost you some pain. Yes, you had to sacrifice your family. Yes, you had to spend money for it. Yes, they turned their back on you. We're not denying that it happened, but you got to shake it off. You can't let it kill you. You can't let it cause high hypertension. You can't let it cause you a heart attack. You got to let it go. You see, Paul knew that he had to shake it off because there was more for him. And God has allowed you to survive because there is more. There is more in you and you have to continue to press forward. You can't give up. I know what happened seemed like a failure to you. But God says, I want to use you for my glory. The Bible says, but Paul shook off the snake into the fire and was unharmed. I'm so glad for the protection of God that when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. You see, the devil will try to hit you with everything possible. He'll try to mess with you in every which way. And for pastors, if he can't get to you, he'll use your children. He'll use the people around you. He'll use your friends who turn into enemies. He'll use anyone to get to you. But the Lord will lift up a standard against that enemy. And oftentimes, our response may be that we need hallelujah to scream or we need to soak in it or we need to stay in it but God is saying you can't stay there you have to shake it off because the unexpected will happen why do you need to shake it off because there's more souls for you to win you have a generation to fight for you see my generation is waiting for generals to arise 
But the generals have been broken, and so they don't want to pour their oil into the next generation. Where are the Samuels? Where are the people who are willing to say, I'm going to hold you up. I'm going to speak life into you. Thank God for Bishop Lee, my God, who put this conference on and who lives this. I put together a, a forum during the pandemic, and Bishop Lee sent me all his notes. That's a general who's willing to pour his oil. There are books awaiting you. There's deliverance in your hand. There's more impact. There's more counseling. There's more baptisms. There's more churches to launch. There's more ministries to lead. You have a giant to slay, people of God. So you have to shake off whatever has been put on you. Whatever has been lingering on you. You got to learn how to shake it off. Don't wait on the preacher to lay hands on you. Don't wait on somebody to call it out and see it in the spirit. You know what's on you. You better shake it off. And Paul uses that same hand, the wounded hand, to now go heal somebody else. I want to encourage somebody tonight that you can heal even with a wounded hand. Even in your brokenness, God can use you to do great things. Even in the times of trouble, you got your own battles to fight. God can use you to help somebody else through what they're going through. He can give you the strength he can give you the boldness. He can give you the oil. He can give you the fire, the anointing you need, the grace you need to forgive people who talked about you, to love on people who turned their back on you. The Lord is telling me, I know the snake bite got in you, but you don't have to let it build fangs and, and build venom inside of you. You can shake it off. Get rid of the bitterness. Get rid of the hurt. Get rid of the pain. I'm done. You can go ahead and play, Michael. You got to be delivered in order to do the work that God is calling you to do. And I believe that this word is for somebody. You see, the snake bite is temporary. It's not going to last forever. The Bible says that it did not harm him. I believe that the snake bite may have stung. You may have felt it, but it ain't going to kill you. You can't die. <laughs> in the middle of what you've gone through, you can't die because there's more in you that God wants to do. There's greater ministry. There's more books. There's, there's things for you to do. I know some of you have said, I'm too old for this. God said, not so. I know some of you say, well, I've done my great works already. God says there's more. There's expansion. There's transition. There's movement. You got to get out of the place of being stuck and move forward. I know it looks like it's not going to happen for you. But the moment you get out of whatever you're in and decide I'm going to move forward, I'm going to, I'm going to move, I'm going to, I'm going to breathe through this, I'm going to keep going, I'm going to keep walking, I'm going to keep moving forward. I'm not going to let Satan stop me because he, he wants to stop you. He, he comes to steal, kill and destroy. He wants to take you out. He wants to move you from your place in God. But I came to declare tonight that the devil is a liar. You got to fight through it. You got to work through it. You got to get through that snake bite and shake it off. The Bible says in Romans 8, verse 18, it says, For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. There's another glory coming. There's another level of the anointing. There's another grace coming over your life. There's a fire. There's a, there's a pool of the Spirit coming over. That's why we couldn't even almost get into the Word tonight. Because there's another level of grace, another level of glory that God wants to give upon you. So that you're strengthened for what's to come. Because there's more to come. 
Paul, I know you've been through the storm. I know you've been shipwrecked. I know you had to deal with a snake bite, but there's still more. And you can't give up now. Stand to your feet, saints and friends. Several things we need to know was that Paul knew God. And if you're going to do ministry, you better know God. And I, I don't want to be, I don't want to be the person that tells you that uh, God will send you the right people. He'll, put, he'll position the right people in your path. But you better know the difference between a stick and a snake. Sticks will help you build the fire. Snakes will bite you along the way. I got so much word in here, but we getting ready to pray. I just sense that God is lifting the weight of somebody in here. You came in here burdened. And 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 the truth be told, you 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 don't have to be honest with anybody but you and God. You know the burden you came in here with. You know what you planned to do when you got back home. But I came to tell you that the Holy Ghost has gone back home before you got there. He's delivering people. He's setting people free. He's transforming lives. He's doing a work that you could not do. Paul believed God. And Paul worked for God. I just want to pray. For anybody under the sound of my voice who has been discouraged and you can stay at your seat, you can come to the altar, you have been discouraged, you have been bitten, you've been dealing with things and it's happened privately and now you say, Lord, I just, I want to lay it down at your feet. I, I don't want to go home with this venom in me. I don't want to go home with this. I, I need to be delivered from this right now. I just want you to find your altar wherever you are. Find your place of rest. Find your, your Malta tonight. And I just want you to leave it at the altar. Don't take it back with you. There's preacher's kids in here who need to be delivered. You're still carrying stuff. And God says, I want to set you free tonight so that you can do ministry freely, so you can trust people, so you can restore people. So you can build them. So that you can encourage them. You can't do it from the brokenness. Find your altar tonight. Whether it's here. Just find your place. Find your place wherever you want to go. If, the, there, if you're in here, you say, this word was for me. I need to find my place. Just lay out before the Lord. If you need to turn around in your seat, we're going to pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you. We honor you. We give you the glory for what you have done tonight. And God, I pray right now through your power, through your might, that you would allow your people to shake it off. Whatever the hurt, the disappointment, the failure, the relationship breakup, the pain of not seeing what you thought was going to happen, unfulfilled promises, Whatever it is tonight, God, we leave it at the altar and we do not pick it back up again. We shake it off. The hurt, the disappointment, the failure of men, the failure of people. We leave it at the altar. We lay it at your feet. God, we can't carry this weight any longer. We can't carry this burden any longer. We can't carry this person in our heart any longer. We can't carry, hallelujah, what we've been dealing with from 20 and 30 years ago. We can't carry it any longer. It's too heavy for us. Deliver us. Set us free. Help us to find our place of rest in you. Because God, we know that all things are possible with you. We know that, God, there's nothing too hard for you to do. And tonight we leave it at the altar. Robo Kora Mandarabasho. Rebebebebesa. 
Robobo Sondo Robo Shianda Yabako Yamanda Yabasondo Rabasaya Riba Baba Baba Sondo Rabakando Rabo So Jesus. I hear the Lord saying that some sons and daughters are going to come back and apologize for how they left. After you poured into them, mandara baso do rabasa. Oh, rabba baba So God's gonna lift the burden off of your heart so that you can preach freely without carrying people in your spirit. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody with the power of agreement, shout Amen. who's willing to fight, who's willing to keep fighting, I'm going to shake it off. <clears throat> I'm going to keep pressing. I'm going to keep pursuing. I'm going to keep doing what God has called me to do. I'm not going to allow it to stop me. There's greater in front of me. If that's you, just lift up your hands. I'm going. I'm fighting. I'm pursuing. I'm not stopping. I'm not quitting. Make that commitment tonight. Second thing I want to do is I want to encourage you. As you've heard this word, surviving the snake bite, surviving the storm, surviving the shipwreck. If you know that you've survived some things and you live to tell the story, just lift up your hands. I've survived some things. I've come through some things. I want each and every one of you, everybody in this building, to find a seed and sow into this word tonight. I would not leave this place without taking this opportunity to give something to this conference, to this ministry. You see, when we sow into kingdom ministries like this, God does it for us. Some of you have your own conferences, you have your own ministries, you have your own stuff going on, and God says, I want to use you as a point person for my glory. As you sow seeds into this ministry, I'm going to bless your ministry. I'm going to open up doors. I'm going to provide ways. And if you can join me in sowing $100 into this service into this ministry where young people young adults where where fathers are now coming together with with sons i'm so glad, grateful that bishop lee included the daughters if you can sew a hundred dollars with me tonight just lift up your hand say i'm gonna sew i'm gonna sew i'm gonna sew thank you thank you thank you if you say, I can get as close to $100 as I possibly can tonight, just lift up your hand. So I'm going to get as close as I can, whether that's 50, whether that's 60, whether that's 80. I want you to sow. I believe the giving is on the screen. You can go online. You can go to their website. They got a QR code. Put your phone right up to it. Camera right up to it. So 
into this word. I'm believing that as you have laid some things down tonight, God is going to deliver you even in your sleep tonight. You're going to rest differently. You're going to have a different grace on your life, a different anointing on your life. Your preaching is going to change because God's going to deliver you and you're going to have the, a fresh oil when you get back. They're coming with the uh, offer buckets. If you have a seat, I'm just going to invite you to come. If our ushers can come to the front. I'm going to ask you to sew. Come on. If you have a seat, I'm going to ask you to sew. It's so good to see so many of you here tonight. So good to see so many friends and family here tonight. We thank you for these seeds. We thank you for this sower and the giver tonight. We pray that you will multiply it. God, press down, shaking together, running over. God, we thank you for this preaching moment. And God, I pray that you would just anoint your people to believe for more, for greater is ahead of us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We thank you and we honor you for what you've done tonight. And we thank you for Bishop Lee. And we praise you for Lady Lee. We thank you for everything that was taking place. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. anybody that's free in the house is there anyone that's really free in the house come on even one more time we give God thanks I really do believe that this is an on time word and if you have been blessed by this woman of God would you put your hands together just one more time As we've gathered here this evening and this week I really believe that this has been what I would say a Kairos moment for many of us that there are some things that have shifted and one of the things I love about God is that he comes or we come into agreement with what he's already said so freedom isn't something that we invented freedom is what God has already declared over our life and when we are in agreement with his word, what we are saying, well, God, I come into agreement with what you've already spoken over my life, spoken over my children, spoken over even our ministries. And so we thank you once again for sharing that word. Uh, it's such an honor to have um, Jeffrey that will be ministering. And so I don't believe it's a psalmist or a minister. If you would put your hands together even now as he comes to minister to us this evening, come on, would you put your hands together? Amen. I believe we're going to sing, we're going to dance, but we're going to lift up the name of Jesus. Come on all across the building. Would you stand to your feet as we take this time just to bless the Lord. Yeah. Glory to Jesus, the Son of the living God. 
Glory to Jesus, the King of Kings. Glory to Jesus, the Lord of Lords. Glory to Jesus, the Word made flesh. Glory to Jesus, our healer, our savior. Glory to the one who has eyes like a flame of fire. The one whose face shines like the sun. Glory to the one who has a two-edged sword coming out of his mouth. Glory to the one whose voice is like the sound of many waters. Glory to the one who sits on the throne with the Father forever. The Lamb of God who is worthy. The Lion of Judah who has conquered. Worthy is he. Holy is he. Glory be to his name. Can you clap your hands one more time in this house? For Jesus. Come on, come on. I know you've been praising all week. You don't have to shout, but can you clap your hands in this moment? For a king whose kingdom will know no end. Hallelujah. It is, um, it's been uh, such a privilege, such an honor uh, to witness what the Spirit of the Lord has been doing in this room tonight. What a time of worship. What an awesome word. What a, what a glory. What a fragrance that is in the room. And, uh, We're here tonight, so is it okay if we go higher? If we can get a little bit more up here, if that's okay, a little bit more of the mics. We're about to go just a little bit higher, if that's okay. Now, let me ask an honest question right quick, Bishop, if this is okay. Can we give the Lord praise for this man of God, the woman of God? Bless you. Let me ask an honest question. Who's tired? Who's tired? You got a right to be, it's okay, it's okay. But listen, what I've, what I've found, um, what I've found is that often it's in the moments where uh, there's a resting and there's a, okay, God, this was good. I think I'm all right. Very often in those moments he says, now that you're on the other side of that move on the other side of that glory he says what you go from glory to glory from faith to faith from strength to strength so i'm believing that even as it is tonight in this worship experience that it will be prophetic as you go home to your churches that you will find waves of glory hitting your house ways of glory hitting your church and that when you think you've got enough he's going to come yet with another move with another manifestation with another revelation and so we're going to sing a little bit tonight um and just feel free to just set your eyes on the king you can stand if you want sit if you want clap if you want be quiet if you want whatever you want to do but let's look to jesus is that all right hallelujah
all say. We give you all say. We. Everything you've done and for who you are, we give. We, give we won't withhold it. Hey, we give you all one more time. We give you all the glory. Come on, we worship. We worship. You are worthy. of Jesus met them they found themselves singing right on King Jesus in the midst of their pain in the midst of their oppression this is what they said they said no man can hinder Jesus Christ, the first and last, no man works like him, for he is king of kings, he is Lord of lords, Jesus Christ, the first and last, no man works like him. He said, Jesus rides on a milk white horse. No one can hinder him. Then they said some real weird, Bishop. They said, the river Jordan, he did cross. And all the theologians said, when did he do that? But see, there was a revelation that they had. And they saw that over there in Joshua, after God had brought the children of Israel over a Red Sea, he brought them out of bondage into wilderness, but there was still another phase, another season called promise. And so there was another place that God had to bring them over called the Jordan River. And so those Negro slaves, they were looking back on that time in uh, uh, there in the book of Joshua, uh, when Joshua meets the commander of the Lord's armies. And he says, Joshua said, who are you with, us or our enemy? And that commander of the Lord's army says, neither. I'm, I'm, I'm the captain of the Lord's host. So they saw Jesus typologically represented all the way back in 
Joshua and then they started thinking about what he did when he died and he rose and he ascended to the right hand of the father to be enthroned forever and they started to think about what it was going to be like when, when according to Revelation 19 the heavens would open and he'd come riding in on a white horse but what they knew is that Jesus wasn't just coming to deliver them from spiritual oppression but from every form of oppression they looked to a savior and they said that's not just our savior that's not just our lord but that's our liberator too and so they said the river jordan he did cross just like he brought israel into their promise he'll bring us into ours no one can hinder him he is king of kings and that's why depression has to bow because he's Lord of Lords. That's why suicide must bow because he is King of Kings. He is Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. chapter 15 the first song in the whole Bible the song of Miriam and the song of Moses when God brought Israel over the Red Sea this is what they sang to the Lord they said the horse and the rider the horse and the you've thrown in the sea for you are the God of victory they said again you have triumphed gloriously yes Lord you're the God of victory Come on, it's easy. Say that with us. The horse and the rider, you've thrown in the sea. Say you are the God of victory. You triumph gloriously. You are the God of victory. So we say our response is thank you. Yes, Lord. And Father, we're grateful tonight. forget you. We'll never forget what you've done for us, Lord. We thank you. We honor you. We praise you. One more time. The horse and the rider, of the say, yeah, you've thrown in the sea. Oh, you are the God. Oh, can you have my glory Hey, you are the God. Say, on death you have trampled. You took back the key. Say, you are the God of victory. Again, you have triumphed gloriously. Say, you are the God of victory. Say, our response is thank you. Yeah, Father, we need We're grateful. Never forget how you healed, how you saved, how you delivered. Say our response is thank you. Hey, Father, we're grateful. Yes, we are. We will not. We'll never forget what you've done. Yes, Lord. Thanks to the Lord For the Lord has done Great things, great things Give thanks to the Lord Say for the Lord has done Great things, great things When I look back over my life I got a 
forget what it was like to cry out for a savior don't forget your story thank you Jesus I want you to take 30 seconds and think about your story and as you do that begin to allow gratefulness and thanks to rise out of your heart whatever that looks like sometimes 
Jesus, we're looking for glory without recognizing the connection to our story. What do I mean? Isaiah chapter 6. I saw the Lord high and lifted up. And what? The train of his robe filled what? The temple. Now in the ancient times, when kings would go to war, and one king would be defeated by another, they would cut a piece of the defeated king's robe off and sew it onto the train of the conquering king's robe. So if the train of his robe fills the temple, that means his presence, his glory, the place where he reigns is filled with victory after victory after victory. And each piece of that train is telling another story of another victory that he's won, of another battle that he's overcome. We serve the Lord of hosts, the Lord Almighty, who's never been defeated. And so the train of his robe fills the temple. I wonder what would happen in our churches if we started being real again. I mean, if, I mean, if, 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 if I brought the part of my story where he won and you brought the part of your story where you saw him get the victory and we started sharing those things in the assembly of God's people, I wonder what kind of glory would begin to fill the room. You can't close your mouth on your testimony. As a matter of fact, let me give you some practice right now. I want you to open your mouth and tell somebody next to you something God did for you, not the general, not the generic, something he did for you. You don't gotta give him the whole book. He delivered me from pornography. I know he did. I was 12, 13 years old. He delivered me from the spirit of suicide. I know he did that. Come on, come on. Because if he, my sister said in praise and worship, that if God could do it for her, he could do it. Any testimonies of healing? Let me see your hands. Come on, the train of his robe fills the temple. Victories. Where two or three are gathered, you don't need a whole lot of people to have glory. All you need to do is gather in his name. You can be sitting in your home. There's some churches, Lord Jesus, I'm here to sing, not talk, but this. There are some churches that literally went from buildings to worshiping in their homes. And can I tell you there's a glory that's coming to homes. Don't despise the day of small beginnings, not just the start, but the restart of small beginnings. Because his glory is going to meet us. So we respond with thanks respond with praise Same 
ancient elders offer praise for the Lord our God Almighty reigns for the Lord our God Almighty reigns let the church bow down Church bow down, let the church bow down. Hey, all the earth, all the earth bow down. Hey, yeah, universe. Light so beautiful, King of kings and Lord of lords, say I'm like fire, hair like wool, voice like roaring waters, radiant light so beautiful, King of kings, come like fire, hey, come like rain, come reveal your glory, flood the earth and fill Place, King of kings and Lord of lords, holy one, you're moving now. We can sense your presence where you are, is holy ground. You're King of kings and Lord of lords, let the church bow.
glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Lamb. Everybody say to the Lamb. We sing to Jesus, Lord, to the Lamb, to the Lamb, to the only one that deserves it, Lord, to the Lamb, to the Lamb. Yeah, we sing glory, Lord, to the Lamb, to the Lamb. That's why we give Him the glory for His power and Omega. Yes, Lord, forever, forever, forever is He. Yeah. Oh, and He reign, He reigns forever. Hey, holy, 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 hey, holy is He. Yes, Lord. So together, forever, we sing glory, glory to the Lamb. With the saints and angels, glory, glory to the Lamb. Yes. The Lamb. Hey, we sing glory, glory with the twenty-four elders, the with the living creatures. Oh, we sing glory, glory, glory to Jesus, glory to the Lamb. Hey, for He is, oh, He is the beginning, oh, and Jesus is. Forever he remains, yes, and he will reign forever with power and authority. Forever Jesus is King, holy, 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 he is here. So we sing glory, glory. Glory to the Lamb. Behold the Lamb of God. We sing glory. Glory to the Lamb. Yeah, the Lamb of God. We say glory to the Lamb. Yes.
your hands in the room. see it the king is coming can you see it yeah. hey the king is coming The king is coming. King is coming. Can you see it? Can you see it? The king is coming. King is coming. Riding on the white horse. Can you see it? Can you see it? Coming with the hosts of heaven. The king the king is coming. Hey, yeah. Can you see it? Can you see it? Hey, yeah. The king is coming. The king is coming. The king is coming. The king is coming. Can you see it? Can you see the it? The king is coming. The king is coming. The king is coming. Can you see it? Can you see it? The king is coming.
How are we going to endure? How are we going to survive? Whatever happens, whatever's coming, the answer's in the Word. This is how we're going to do it. According to Hebrews 12, we're sitting down, seeing that we are compassed about by so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight. The woman of God says, shake it off. And the sin that so easily besets us, but you can't stop there. This is how we make it. Looking unto Jesus. The author and the finisher of our faith. That's how we endure. Lift your hands for a moment. I believe Bishop is coming. Lift your hands for a moment. And as the band plays, can we seal this? Can we seal this? I mean, I love the author Francis Chan. He says, you got to learn how to stare at God. Sometimes we look and we look away too quick. Come on, I need you to take 35 seconds and stare at him. And don't let shame make you move your eyes away. Come on, stare at him. Don't let mistakes or frustration or bitterness make you move your eyes. Come on, stare at him. Come on, high eye. Come on, just a few more seconds. This is the posture that we win with. Eyes fixed on him. Don't take your eyes off of him for anything. put your hands together come on come on put your hands together even as we gaze into the eyes of the king of kings father we thank you that with just one gaze maybe it's the same gaze that the criminal that was on the cross that says when you go into paradise remember me with one gaze with one look Jesus' response was this very day. You will be with me in paradise. And I think for this context and for this Connects Conference, one gaze positions everything that you have been running from and places you into the safety, in the presence, in the destiny of the Most High. If you believe that, would you put your hands together and say, God, I know you've done it. But would you say it? God, I know you've done it. We want to thank Psalmist Jeffrey Golden for ministering and his, his family with us. I believe the winner of the seventh season, is, is that right, of Sunday's best? Come on, put your hands together for that. I was going to audition, but they said I couldn't sing. But we're so glad, just even for those that are out tonight, we want to invite you to be with us tomorrow. But before you leave this evening, we have some refreshments uh, right there in the fellowship hall. So we invite you to come back um, to connect and just be with us for a little while. Let me just leave this blessing with you all. Father God, I just thank you for this evening. I thank you for what you've already done, what you've started, what you've jump started. And Father, I pray, dear God, that there is no one leaving here empty. But, Father, there is a revelation on our lives that you have set something and set us apart, that we've shaken off everything, everyone, every bit of unforgiveness, every sense of bitterness. And, Father, we are walking out of here free in Jesus' name. 
We pray and we shout and say amen. Come on one more time. Just bless the Lord. Thank you all for being with us this evening. We can't wait to fellowship with you and be back tomorrow morning as we end off this Connects Conference.